Hey guys and welcome back to Spooky Witches UK. Um, before I get into today's video I need you to go ahead and smash that subscribe button for me so you can keep seeing my face on your screens. Um, also when I hit 100 subscribers I'm going to be doing a giveaway. Um, I'm going to be running it on Facebook and Instagram. So it'll be like double the chances to join in. Um, I'm only like 68 off. So please, 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 can you get your friends to subscribe? Family, whoever's interested in history and spooky and paranormal and all things weird and wonderful. Um, make sure they subscribe so we can get that subscribe counter up. Um, but today's video is going to be about none other than Stonehenge. Now I'm going to move to this side a bit so I can put a picture of it here. Um, so before Stonehenge was built, there was four or five pits and three of these seem to hold like large totem light poles um and these were in the mesolithic period between eight eighty five hundred and seven thousand bc but it is unknown how these relate to stonehenge um but it was at this time that most of southern england was mainly woodland and the chalk downland in the area of stonehenge was open landscape which was which was unusual at the time and this may be why it became the site of the early neolithic monument complex bear with me on some of these words right now this complex included the causeway enclosure at robin hood's ball which are the two cursus monuments or rectangular earthworks the greater or stonehenge and the lesser cursus and also several long barrows which all date to the centuries around 3500 BC these monuments most likely influenced the later location of Stonehenge now it is possible that the heel stone or low mound which is known as the North Barrow were the early components of Stonehenge but the earliest known event was the construction of a round ditch was with both inner and outer banks which was built around 3000 BC. This enclosed area was an early form of stone of a Stonehenge monument. Within within the bank and the ditch there were possible possibly some timber structures and set just inside the bank were 56 pitch which are known as the Aubrey Halls. There has been a lot of debate about what exactly stood in these halls. Um, the consensus for many years has been that they housed upright timber poles but recently it has emerged that some of them could have held stones. So within and around the Aubrey Halls people had buried cremations and about 64 have been found and maybe up to 150 people had actually been buried at Stonehenge which makes it the largest Neolithic cemetery in the British Isles. Now, around 2500 BC, the stones were set up in the centre of the monument. Now, there were two types of stone used. There was the larger sarsen stones and the smaller blue stones. The sarsen stones were erected in two concentric arrangements which were an inner horseshoe and an outer circle. And the blue stones were set between them in a double arc. Now, probably around the same time as stones were being erected in the centre of the monument, the sarsens, the sarsen stones close to the entrance were raised together with four station stones in the periphery. Now, Around 200 or 300 years later, the blue stones were rearranged to form a circle and an inner, and an inner oval. 
but just to note that this was changed again later on to form a horseshoe. The Earthwork Avenue was also built at this time to connect Stonehenge to the River Avon. Now one of the last prehistoric activities at Stonehenge were the digging around the stone, around the stone setting of two rings and conceited uh, two rings of conceited pits, the so-called Y and Z holes. Radiocarbon dated by antlers, which were around 1800 to 1500 BC. They possibly may have had plans to rearrange the stones and these plans were never completed. Stonehenge was built at a great time, like a great change in prehistory, just as the new styles of beaker pottery and the knowledge of metalworking, together with the burial of individuals with grave goods, were arriving from the continent. From around 2400 BC, well furnished beaker graves such as the one of Armsbury Archer are found nearby. Now, in the early Bronze Age, we are going through these ages dead quick, man. Um, in the early Bronze Age, one of the greatest concentrations of round barrels in Britain was built in the area around Stonehenge. Many barrel groups seem to have been deliberately placed. On hilltops that are visible from Stonehenge itself, such as King's Barrow Ridge and the particular, particularly rich burials of Normanton Down Cemetery. Now, four of the sarsens at Stonehenge were covered with hundreds of carvings depicting axe heads and daggers. They appear to be bronze axes of the Areton Down type, dating from 1700 to 1500 BC. Maybe these axes were symbols of power or status within the early Bronze Age society, or maybe they were related some way to the nearby round barrow burials. Now, later in the Bronze Age, less effort went into construction of the ceremonial burial grounds, and more effort went into creating fields. In the Iron Age, God, we're moving on dead quick, aren't we? In the Iron Age, probably around 700 BC, a major hill fort, later known as the Ves... I want to say the Vespian... No, the Ves... Vespas... Vespasians? The Vespasians camp was constructed a quarter mile east of Stonehenge, overlooking the River Avon. Stonehenge appears to be frequently visited in the Roman period from AD 43 since many Roman artefacts have been found and recent excavations suggest that it was a place of ritual importance to the Romano-British people. Now, the small town of Armsbury was likely to have been built around the 6th century AD at a crossing point over the River Avon. A depicted man, possible, possibly a criminal, was buried at Stonehenge around the Saxon period and from this time on, sheep husbandry dominated to open downland, downland around... To, oh my god! To open downland around Stonehenge. <sighs> Help me. Um, the earliest surviving written piece of like on Stonehenge dates back to the medieval period and from around 14th century onwards there are many written pieces and drawings and paintings of Stonehenge. Now since 19, 1897 when the military of defence bought a vast amount of land on the Salisbury Plain for army training exercises the activities of this had impacts on the area barracks firing ranges airfields air hospital well field hospitals and light railways were established but some of these like the first world war stonehenge base has since been demolished but others like the lark hill airfield sheds still stand and are an important piece of british military history now, meanwhile, the construction of turnpike roads and railways to Salisbury 
brought more and more visitors to Stonehenge and from the 1800s various stones have been propped up with timber poles but concerns for the public safety grew when an outer sarsen and its lintel fell in, the ni in 1900. Its then owner, which was Sir Edmund Artri Artribus, Sir Edmund Artribus, with the help of the Society of Antiquities, organised the reconstruction of the leaning tallest Trilithon in 1901. This was to start a, this was to start a sequence of campaigns to conserve, conserve and restore Stonehenge. The last stones were consolidated in 1964. Now, since then, it has passed from private ownership to it being owned by the state and the English heritage look after Stonehenge for the state whilst the National Trust had has bought quite a vast amount of land which surrounds Stonehenge to make sure that it's well preserved. Now, it's no secret that no one really knows how Stonehenge was built in the first place. However, it remains one of the seven wonders of the world. There have been several paranormal occurrences around there because I'm pretty sure Stonehenge is on the ley lines. But I could be wrong about that. But people have seen figures around there. Apparently, you can feel the energy of the workers. Like, there's been speculation that Romans had gone mad um, and they'd slaughtered a bunch of peasants who refused to knock it down because apparently they wanted it removed. I don't know how true that is. I am no historian, so I couldn't tell you. Um, but yeah, there are many, many articles and stories surrounding the paranormal occurrences at Stonehenge, but it is something that you're definitely going to have to check out yourself. Um, because it is no secret that Stonehenge emits a certain amount of power because nobody really knows anything about it. I am planning a trip to go to Stonehenge when the UK is out of lockdown and we are free to travel. But obviously we've got to be able to travel first. Um, but if you've been already, let me know. Um, let me know what it was like. But I know one thing for certain is Stonehenge is most definitely a magical place. Until next time, stay spooky witches.